Well, hey, once every couple years, PlayStation tries to swing big with some new hardware. Mm. We had 3D what TVs. A <laughs> we had Sony Move. Uh, let's see. We had the little PlayStation VMU thing that you can play Crash Bandicoot on. Oh, the 3D the Ex- TV, man. We're still using those. Yeah, we had the Xperia Play. Uh, now we oh, have the Harry Potter book. Wonder oh, book. Wonder Don't book. get me started. Man. We had the uh, the light gun sharpshooter. Mm-hmm. Now we have PlayStation VR. Is it? Tell me at what tier is it in Sony's arsenal of hardware oh, rollouts? Oh, interesting. Mm. Uh, it's pretty high. I think. I think Vita? it's Vita. I think it's more. Well, not a no, not above Vita. Are we gonna consider oh. that a, like a peripheral? I don't know what that Some is. Some people consider that pretty low. I love now. the Vita. Okay. Uh, I think Vita is great. Um, but as f- in terms of like move and stuff like that, you know, like I think VR is very high. On so you've been program. playing a lot of it, Kyle. I've been playing a lot. I'm still a little nauseated from the stream this morning. I think. We were trying to get him to puke. Yeah. <laughs> Intentionally? Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, know. yeah. I wanted him to vomit. We didn't Just play, have him look in the mirror. We didn't play. <laughs> no, well, that was uh, Reiner played Batman. So in that in Batman. Oh. Look in the mirror. So. I, uh, I haven't talked to you much about it. I hear like the most common phrase in the office over the last week or so since we've had is the PSVR. Where's Kyle? He's at home playing. VR. Well, that's actually number one. The number two <laughs> is, man, I don't know if I can play that game anymore. It's making me sick. This seems yeah. like the most nauseating VR helmet by a mile, it right? Is. Yeah. It, what is going on with that? It's. Uh, I think the the it's it's because. Unlike Vive and Oculus, which like literally rest a- against your face and, and um, obscures all light from entering, yeah. there's a gap on the the PlayStation VR that lets in light, and you you still have a little bit of peripheral vision. And like, it's, if you're playing with the Move controllers, like, and you're kind of moving them around, you can even sometimes see the light coming up through there, and huh. it will reflect on the lens. And I think this th- sounds bad. Do you think if you just play in a completely dark room, that would help? It does help. Yeah. It um that's like it's not. It doesn't like break the experience. It doesn't totally ruin it, but it does. It, it's impossible to ignore, um, and and for that reason, it is uh, compared to Oculus and Vive. It is like the the worst, I guess you could say, or uh-huh. the the least good. We can say know. worst. Yeah, um, but that being said, it is still like a legitimate virtual reality experience. Like I think it is competitive with Vive and Oculus and, and pricing. Ex- yeah, it, and it is cheaper. Yeah, um, so and and that's kind of in my review. I kind of compare it to like the sort of the way that we talk about like PC gaming versus console gaming in general like PlayStation VR is not technically as good as those other two but what? It, it has it has an ease of use it has it's a lower price like it's much easier to set up it's easier yeah. to get into the games it works more consistently uh well you can turn it on mark yeah. i don't know maybe i should take back that it maybe it doesn't work as consistently because they're all about the same level of like you lose your the signal and vibe sometimes your controllers uh right. won't be seen by the camera and stuff okay like that. but the but, one nice thing is like when vive and and oculus came out i was like i'm gonna have to upgrade my pc a lot if i yeah. want to buy one of these but like with this it's like i have a ps4 that's all you need yeah, yeah, yeah. all i need I, I need a playstation camera and a move controller and that's it like that's yeah. the only thing i would have to upgrade there's a lot of experiences that you don't even need the move controller for even so. how much is it uh so i think 499 yeah, for the bundle which the, comes with two move controllers and a camera camera and playstation worlds which is like a game game demo disc and the headset is yeah. there any universe where it's worth that money um, or three. I think so I think <laughs> it, it's tough to say because it's like that's if you have a PS4 and you're like sort of fascinated by VR and you want to try it out like that's that's a great way to go like if you don't want to upgrade a PC or if you don't want to dedicate a room to Vive mm-hmm. like I think PlayStation VR is like like I said it's a legitimate VR experience and you will get VR experiences from well, what are the experiences you should have then? yeah exactly like what are you actually doing what's the highlight of the software so far so well so a couple of my favorites I like I'm going to put an asterisk on this before you answer. Is we've Sony has and other publishers have provided what a quarter of the launch games at this point. Okay. Okay. Yes, we haven't Uh, played. So we have only played like 25% of what is there, roughly. Gotcha. So yeah, temper that. Like of what we've played, these are the yeah the ones. So um, Batman VR, which we played through on our stream. If you go watch the archive, you can actually see the full game. Is very cool. It's short. But it, like you get a sense that you are there's a there's a couple of sequences where you really kind of feel like you're standing in Gotham or you're standing in the Batcave or you're standing in Wayne Manor. Kind Emphasize of, standing. Yeah, you, you stand. Well, this in sounds like that that Lucasfilm Star Wars uh, VR thing that I think we talked about on the podcast a little bit, where it's like uh, technically it feels like you're standing on Tatooine. Yeah. But is that enough of a thrill? It's the proof of concept is there. 
more so than the Star Wars one where you do want more of this experience. You want a longer narrative. You want them to kind of go in that telltale way of creating a adventure game in Arkham, right? Like mm-hmm. Rocksteady, please make this series. Like yeah. it is cool. And I liked what I did in the game. And they did a good job of changing up the gameplay enough where you were doing different interactions all the way through it. Yeah, but like, a lot of time you're just watching it as Batman just standing there. Okay. But there's like there's a sequ- like when you're doing the the detective stuff is where the game the game really shines. Mm-hmm. Like there's a scene where you you're kind of investigating um, a death of an important character in case people don't want it to be spoiled. And you but actually- this is canon with the Arkham series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Uh, okay. And well, um, yeah, uh, like you're you're in this you're in this Gotham Alley, uh, which is like I think literally a environment from Arkham Knight. I could I could be wrong about that. And if I am, then they did a good job making it feel like it belongs there. Um, and you're actually you kind of do that thing where you make a 3D sort of render of the crime scene, and you can kind of walk around and, and look at it and isolate specific moments that happen and scan them and stuff like that, which is very cool. Like you're basically setting again. You're not walking though. You're, you're not walking. You're standing there you're warping viewing, the points to view as a stationary Batman. Yeah, and you're watching a fight unfold and sort of analyzing it up close. And then there's a sequencer in the morgue, and you're scanning these bodies, looking for clues. And um, you guys remember that scene in uh, Dark Knight, the Nolan Dark Knight, where he has to like reconstruct a bullet in order to find out its like source. Right. Yeah. You basically do that in the game um, by like using the move controllers to grab objects and reconstruct them to find like the serial number on a bullet. To which le- leads you to the next point, and that stuff's really cool. Like that, yep. I like that stuff a lot. And you said it's like a half an hour. Yeah, it's like about a forty-five 40 minutes, an hour and maybe, then yeah. after you play through it once, um, they inject uh, Riddler trophies all over the place. And so Riddler, like, <laughs> Riddler puzzles, actually. Yeah, is like this a, like an episode one thing, or is this like the whole? Thing? This is it. Like this is it. Yeah, okay. there's they've, a, there's they've a beginning, doubled, middle, and end to it. Yeah, yeah Rocksteady's kind of doubled down. Like this is it for them with with Batman. Yeah. What a weird way to go out. Yeah, and it's neat, though. I mean, it really is. It feels like a Disney exhibit or a Disney ride where you're like, oh, that was cool. I felt like I kind of went someplace and did something. And speaking Uh, of Disney rides, the other game that I enjoyed a lot was Until Dawn. Uh, Rush of Blood to the Head? Well, just Rush of Blood. Okay. Uh, Which doesn't, it doesn't really connect to last year's game. Like, they mentioned the the, the two siblings that died in the beginning of the game and their brother Josh a little bit. And you see some of the characters and locations from that game. But really, it's just like you're sitting in a roller coaster and you're uh, kind of going along this track and you're and you're shooting things. It's basically like the evolution of like a light gun game. Okay. But it's it's cool. Like you like using the move controllers works really well. You can aim really well. And there's a lot of really messed up sequences that happen and you go through a lot of really weird stuff. It gets really... Yeah, you're on like a roller your, coaster. Do you feel like you're? Oh yeah, it it, it would make me ill. You're like it made me nauseated. At yeah, times. we had him standing on the roller coaster. Yeah. You want to awesome. sit to play that game? Oh, that'd be weird. So, is there story ah. stuff too? Like, is there a branching uh, very narrative little, or anything? No, no, there's. It's does not have any kind of branching narrative. There's like these little prologues uh, where this guy kind of talks to you before each level, and you kind of get this. I got the sense that you were like, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you fit into the Undill Dawn universe, but you went to see like a like you're going to see like a doctor or a therapist. And you're sort of imagining. <laughs> okay. All Time this to take stuff. this roller coaster to my therapist. Have you played Until Dawn? It really is yeah, not out the of beginning. It's really not out of like character for that game. It's just the, funny that you get on a roller coaster to yeah. do that. Well, it's, it's all an emotional <laughs> roller coaster. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, but man, it's just like really fun because you can kind of look in multiple directions and shoot in opposite directions. So you can be like, like people will be running at you from multiple directions. You got to switch back and forth. And you can even like, I think in the stream I did it, like there were times where people were coming at me from like, really opposite ends and i was just like firing at them doing the han solo and force awakens just Pretty shooting behind your back yeah okay. yeah and it's it's cool there's a lot of cool sequences that happen in that game and it was like a level was like 15 minutes and yeah. it seemed like there was a bunch there was like there's seven of seven them. Yeah. yeah so there's some game there it's just that was one of the more substantial experiences okay. yeah and then i jeff cork uh, reviewed thumper jeff cork did not care for thumper he gave five it, seven five didn't care five for seven it. five I, I'm kind of on the other end of that. I think Thumper is really awesome. It's like a former Harmonix people, and it's a really fast-paced rhythm game where you're you're kind of on a track, and it almost has like it has like this. The soundtrack is very percussive and driving, Just and aggressive. it's aggressive. It's super intense, and it gets really fast. And then like uh, every level has these kind of like boss battles where you're fighting these giant like Star Fox Andros style faces, and like. One thing that VR does really well is like giant things invading yeah. your space. Um, so I, that game was really cool. So I it's like, like a shooter. A you're saying it's a it's more of a rhythm game. I read it wasn't very good. 
Yeah, I think Jeff Court gave it a five seven five. Look up video, I, I, I make up your own mind. Yeah, there's an actually a, a good point about Thumper is like if you get into PSVR, whatever bundle you get, it comes with a demo disc, which has mm -hmm. a lot of great stuff on it. And one of those games is Thumper, so you can play the first level and see if it if it does it for you. Yeah, the full Res Evil Seven kitchen demo is on that disc. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. cool! I haven't played that yet. Yeah, Res is on there as well. Uh, the Res is cool. Res looks really cool. I like Res in VR a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, kind of sort of recommending it to people that want a limited VR experience for five hundred dollars. Well, here's here, go going back to your original question. Yeah. In any universe, is that worth it? We don't know yet. Like we'll know. We'll have a better idea next week. Uh, after we've played all the demo discs. But right now, it seems like people are very, developers are very timid in how much they're kind of, the support they're pledging. And it's a lot of proof of concept stuff like that yeah. Batman experience. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of tepid in general on VR. Like nothing in VR has really gotten me really excited and being like, this is something I need in my house. Like even spending like almost a week with PlayStation VR, it's personally, it's not one that I think I want to purchase, but for <laughs> I mean, it's true. Like, yeah. I, but I also am in not a position this where reality. <laughs> that's true. I'm also in a, a position where I have one at work that I can go try, which is like not for most people, mm -hmm. but for what Sony wants to do, which is like deliver a PlayStation, a virtual reality experience that plugs into your console. I think it works, and it works pretty well. Except it, it makes you sick every time you play it. Not every time. Certain okay. games. It comes down to the games too. Like yep. Thumper is very fast, but does not make me sick. Um, mm -hmm. But then there was like. There, I think I believe it's called Scavengers Odyssey. I could be wrong about that on the PlayStation Worlds game, which, by the way, PlayStation Worlds is a collection of like tech demos. Scavengers Odyssey is like try that game at your own risk because it immediately like made my stomach turn over. Like it was bad. What was the game we played today? Like I got really excited watching a horror game that we were playing. It was like a walking simulator. Here they lie. That that looked really yeah. cool. I think I want to see more of that. That was just a demo, but okay. wow. It was Sony Santa Monica, and you're basically walking through these like you're just walking straight through these sort of underground creepy subway things and <laughs> subway things. So they're called yeah, yeah. That's official. <laughs> tunnels. You tunnels, know, you could call yeah. them tunnels or things. And uh, stuff is just getting weird and warped, and like there were like these giant like puddles of blood and giant creatures walking out of them and like some dude to pig mask killed me because I, I guess I went to his house when I wasn't supposed Duh. to. It uh, looked creepy and different and yeah. cool and it was like kind of Sin City where it was black and white and then red at times. Yeah, like, right all over. I like Ooh. it. I like <laughs> newspaper. It. That's right. Uh, I like to see uh, a demo disc coming back too. It's a yeah. like, fun callback to PS1, PlayStation yeah. Underground era. It, I, I, that was really smart on their part because there's like nine games on there or something and it's it's also really good for VR if you're kind of if it, if it makes you nauseated, those demos are pretty quick. Find so. out which one will make you puke. Exactly. Have a good time, everybody. Uh, Eve Valkyrie will probably do that for you. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that one got to me even on, yep, uh, that Oculus. One's on, on there. Yeah. The big question is going to be Res Evil next year because that is like yeah. the first legit AAA big series coming to VR, play the whole game that way. But are, is this going to be the answer where it's a hybrid game where you could play it without VR or... With no, they, you can, can play it without, They've said <laughs> that you can play it without VR or with VR, right? That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. But it's like, right. is that the answer for AAA games coming to oh, VR? They just split the design sense down, down the middle, gotcha. I guess. That's the stuff I'm curious about. Like, I won't know until I play it, but I feel like I want to play more big AAA type projects. I don't want these like little like side stories. Like, yeah, there's no market for it, but come on, put well, 70 million into it. Let's go. But yeah, like I want to play a like, God of War or something on this. And, right. Like, I think yeah. that would be fun. Or like a, a full Arkham game. Like that Arkham experience was yeah. like very brief, but I, it was like I would love to be a detective, like looking at you know trying to solve little puzzles in a room and stuff. Do you like guys that. think the market's going to get to that point? Would I mean, outside of Facebook money, to, like port it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, it's I, been really hard to get Vive and Oculus right now. There's no stores that really sell them. PlayStation VR is going to be the first one that is sitting on store shelves in Walmart's, Targets, GameStops. Like it'll be there, right? Like, yeah, that's the first true, true consumer test, I think, outside yeah. of hardcore gamers that are in the know going to Oculus's website and buying it. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's just I weird because like those add-on peripheral things like almost never do well. Like even when it's cool technology, like oh, connect. Did really well. Super did Scope it do well Six. Though? Oh yeah, yeah Connect. Me? Connect is one of the most successful it? like purples like of all time. Yeah, eleven like million that. out of the yeah. gate or something. Right. Like that. It holds I some kind corrected. of Guinness record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there you go. Multi tap <laughs> on PS One was huge. Boo. Boo. Guinness record only successful those, peripheral in gaming history. Those uh, you know those Wii remote tennis rackets. People bought a lot of those. The Connect Raft. <laughs> I mean, don't even get me started on these oh, peripherals. Wow. Everybody had one of those. Uh, but to answer your question, Hanson, no. No one should buy it. 
No, no one. You're asking about AAA experience. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Correct. <laughs> uh,